Alright guys, it's Legend of War 101 here with a Midnight Mass review. Oh my gosh, this show is top notch. This is one of the best shows I've ever seen, ever made. Mike Flanagan has outdone himself with this show. I mean, I'm a fan of Mike Flanagan anyway, but oh my gosh. I was gonna literally, I was late to the party with the show because I was gonna watch it anyway, but I just never got around to watching it. But my friend Ben from the Square Eyes Syndrome podcast that I do, um, he literally watched the whole show, told me, hey Troy, you're gonna love this show with the religious um, conversations and <laughs> commentary on this show is amazing you'd love it as a christian as i am so this has a great take on the vampire mythos and it is <laughs> the twist in this show is amazing oh my god so good so good um so where, where can i even start with this show oh before i do all that remember to follow me on twitter and instagram as always anyone who's followed the channel knows that's how i roll like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. It helps the channel get seen. Um, press the notification bell. Put the comments in the comment section down below, as always. Um, but yeah, um, it's a small town um, <laughs> where these people are literally living their daily lives, and some of them want to leave, some of them can't leave. Crockett Island, you know, is where they're at. Uh, a fishing village, I should say, and it kind of starts off like you kind of like where where are they gonna go with this? Because it starts with a character called Riley, um, Riley Flynn, and he's uh, literally serving time. He's in prison for running over this girl, um, wherever he was at the time, um, drunk driving. And he's the devout Christian at the time. But um, obviously being in prison for all that time, he's lost his faith. So then he comes back to this town. Um, so how many episodes this year? It's literally seven episodes. Seven episodes show. Um, so on Netflix. Netflix is killing it. So let's get back to the story anyway. Netflix is on fire. But yeah, he goes back to the town. Everyone's kind of looking at him a bit different, except for his own, or even his own family's looking at him different. His dad, he's kind of saying, "Oh my gosh, he doesn't know how to to treat him." His little brother and his mom are kind of they always they're cool with him, but um, he, he obviously he feels lost. He gets painted with a broad brush. He can't get a job now because they're gonna he's blacklisted, as you know, if you've come out of prison. That's what happens to you. You can't get a decent job because that's on your record. So. Yeah, um, <laughs> so basically, this is a God fearing town. Um, as most of these um, uh, little islands, and it's got this that one little church in the middle of all these, these square square miles. And there is a well, there was a old bishop who used to um, run this run the town. Um, What's his name? Pruitt. Uh, why is his the full name? I don't know it's Pruitt something. Yeah, Monsignor Pruitt. Monsignor, that's what you call it. The Catholic faith, Monsignor Pruitt. Um, and he's aging right now. I think he's having a dementia, it looks like. And he is replaced by a a guy called Father Paul Hill, uh, played by Hamish uh, Linklater, <laughs> he's a really good actor, by the way, um, I remember him from Legion, that show, which is a really good show as well, plays with the mind as well, really good, <laughs> and um, yeah, he's awesome, he's awesome as the Father Paul Hill, and as you know, as the show kind of ticks on. You start to realise there's something weird about him. It's like his massive chest that he brought with him from where he came from. 
and he does all these sermons and <laughs> one of the kids uh, one of the um, altar boys spots him putting something into the stocking up on the, the wine on the communion yo and he was like okay we're gonna send the communion out yeah yeah, yeah we're ready we're ready and starts pouring this out of his flask and I was like from then I was like this guy is dodgy and throughout the show he's um, recapping what happened to Monsieur Pruitt but then you start to realise Father Paul Hill is not what he appears to be well, before we that, before we get to that point, he's obviously he's helping the town's people out. Uh, people are uh, like what's his name, like Joe Corley. He's down in his luck because he shot um, a little girl um, in the town, and he's literally a pariah at this point. Called Lisa Scarborough. Yeah, he shot her yeah, in the spine. She can't walk. She's a, um, a, a very devout Christian. She goes to church every day. Um, and it's her and her family. Uh, most people in the town. Some people still don't go, but 90% of the town goes to church. Um, there's a, a doctor in the town. Uh, one doctor. Uh, what's her name? Let me find it. The doctor of the town. Where is she? Where's her name? What's the doctor the time? Should should say it right here. Gunning. There you go. Um, Sarah Gunning in the show. Uh, played by Anna, Annabeth Kish. Anyone seen X Files? Um, West Wing. Yeah, he knows who she is. They know who she is. Very uh, famous actor. He's been around for a long time. And I was seen her. While I was like, whoa, I haven't seen her. Well, the middle family's watching the show. Was like, whoa, I haven't seen her in a long time. She had a little. She had a trim. <laughs> she, had a, she got the um, um oh, what's his name? Um from Resident Evil 2. Oh gosh, she got that trim. So um yeah. Uh she's got to the town and she starts to suspect that something weird is going on because everyone's starting to get younger. Even her mother, who is really ill herself, she's forgetting things and she she's really old. She's starting to get um she mentioned herself, just like a Monsignor Pruitt. And she starts to age backwards. She's getting younger and younger as the show is going on. And I'm like, ever since father, Paul Hill walked into town. At the same time, miracles start to appear. Miracles start to happen. Um, Lisa, who hasn't been able to walk the entire time we've seen her on the show, Monsignor does a service one time and he goes, no, get up yourself, get the communion yourself, get out of the wheelchair. She gets out of the wheelchair and she starts to walk. And I'm like, oh my gosh, my gosh, she starts to walk. He gets through to Riley, Riley starts to confide in him with these little meetings, little sessions, talking about religion, you know what I'm saying? Why he doesn't believe and why, and um, the father boy will tell him, tell him why he should believe. Awesome. This awesome. The conversation, the religious conversation, even with the oh, uh, another interesting character, Sheriff Hassan from I Zombie fame. Uh, that's where I know him from. And he has a son, a uh, Muslim uh, son as well, with Muslim faith. And his son is very curious of the Christianity and the miracles that's going on. But as a Muslim himself, or a practicing Muslim, um, he can't stand it because he's a predominantly Christian town. Like he's the only Muslim guy, and there's, and there's a woman who throws barbs in from like the from time to time. Um, Bev, a character called Bev, she's the, she's the antagonist, almost almost the antagonist of the of the, the old rock antagonist of the show. Uh, she's a Christian. She's like the uh, you know what I'm saying, minister of the church. Uh, very in influential figure in the community. It's here like this. She's a holier than thou character. She's she thinks she's better than everybody else. Um, she gives um, Sheriff Hassan's son a Bible, and that started with beef uh, with the sheriff. And he goes to the school and complains to the teachers and the, and the board. They should be giving my Bibles in the church, and that starts the whole conversation about um, the Bible, the Quran. Um, should um, religion be in schools? And I loved all of that. That's, that was a very interesting topic to bring up in the show. And, and they, they, 
describe everything perfectly. They do it with um, nothing crass, nothing um, too crazy, just explained perfectly and dealt with perfectly in the show. That's, that's the word, dealt. It was dealt with perfectly in the show. And uh, this is why the show's just the writing in this show is top notch. This was a list. This show deserves an, an, all the awards, all the nominations, and they, they deserve wins. Not just nominations, wins. A ton of them. Um, so every award he gets, he gets nominated for next, he has to win them. Simple as that. Writing, directing. Oh my gosh. It's, whew, and the editing, this is, and people, the main complaint about the show is that it was slow. And I'd argue that it was perfectly paced, perfectly um, paced, um, especially with the subject matter and what was, the amount of content that was in the show. It was perfect. It built and built and built into a massive climax. And it was amazing. <laughs> to finish, awesome. And um, let's go back to Father Paul Hill for a second. He, that we later find out, he is the aging Monsignor Pruitt. Because people start to realise, they start to see a photo of him. He's getting ill from time to time because he is not feeding as he should be. Uh, he did hear what I just said? Feeding as he should be because he was in this, in Jerusalem somewhere. And he was in this desert. He saw a cave, and it was in and in this cave, there was a, as he says, an angel. Which anyone who's seen a vampire movie or TV show knows it's a vampire, but he um, sees it as an angel because of his faith, and he ties it heavily to the Bible, um, the blood. The wings, the look, the the, the eternal life. He, he ties every, and it was great how they tied everything into that. Because apparently the vampire, um, he smuggled it into Crockett Island. So that's where all those miracles came from. The vampire, um, and he, and towards the end, he literally there was like a, the last couple of um, episodes he. Brings the vampire into the church, and then they they start to say, "What the heck is going on?" You know, because everyone in the town is literally healed from their ailments, and he goes, "Yes," he just reveals him, and he's just, "Oh my gosh, it was, it was, it was insane." Anyone seen the show Childhood's End? It reminds you of that, just the reveal stuff like that, like a, a higher being just in your presence, and you're just, just fearful. You, know, you have no way of stopping this thing. So, um, we kind of <laughs> an awe of this creature, and <laughs> he's gonna um, bless them all because apparently they've all drunk, but obviously they've drunk it on the vampire's blood at this point. Um, oh, before that, I missed um, a crucial point. Riley, he spots in one of these sessions with um, Father Paul, well, I should say, Pruitt. And he sees a vampire putting his, his blood into the um, to the wine, the church wine. So the vampire is literally gorges on him, turns him into a vampire. So then he, he can't take it anymore. He goes to see Erin. Erin's lost her baby because of the, the vampire blood. Her, her baby has just been consumed by the blood. The blood is a foreign body. Got rid of it. So that's where the doctor, she starts to go on a hunt to stop the... <laughs> to stop Father Paul, Monsignor Pruitt, and Riley just has all these dreams about this this woman, and he always has a dream about sitting in the boat, sunset rising. So this all became true when he shows Erin that he was a vampire, and he turns to ash and tells her to leave town and leave you know, leave the island, but she does she doesn't because Erin always likes to do the the right thing, so. She said, I'm going to save this town. So she goes back um, with the doctor, the sheriff. This is where all the stuff kicks in, kicks into what I was talking about earlier. Um, with the big reveal when the, the main vampire shows up. People die in that church. It's chaos. They all start eating each other because they, cause they, they do a mass death. A cult, and it's, and the cult leader death scene. <laughs> Literally, they all drink something and they die. 
even the sheriff's son, he takes it. So he's a vampire now. And it's literally 90% of that town, 99% of the town is, is, is vampiric now. Um, yeah, they kill each other. I mean, so most of them, like, literally, all of them wake up afterwards and then they go out and just literally hunt the rest of the town down who haven't been to church. They hunt them down, turn them, like, literally. <laughs> That just eat them, turn them into the rest of the vampires who haven't been there, and and this is a great scene. The and Monsignor Pruitt kind of literally turns um, on the whole idea of the whole concept of eternal life from the vampire, and because the vampire literally takes his old love, the doctor's mom, uh, Mildred, she's fully young now. Um, because if he shoots the vampire, the vampire just literally just flies her out of the church and that's when the stuff is kicking off. Um, because I thought, oh, okay, she's gone, she's coming back, but she does. And her and, uh, Pruitt have a discussion about the, the um, the doctor girl, Sarah. That is, is his daughter. This is his daughter. So all this time, all those years, it's his, his daughter. He kind of almost looked like he ran away from that fact. Um, and then the doctor, she gets shot. Um, and they have this kind of moment where Pruitt tries to put the blood in their mouth and in Sarah's mouth, Sarah's like, nah, nah, I just want to die, just let me die. But then this whole sequence comes off, the vampire gets Erin, bites her, Erin cuts the vampire's wings, just, just literally just carves into him, the soft part of the wing, and he can't really fly properly, he's trying to fly off because sunlight's about to happen now, so then all the... Um, um, Riley's parents um, kind of lead a church song to kind of rally the people because oh because the sheriff yeah sheriff gets shot um, he sees his son they go they go to the beach everyone start to do their swan song <laughs> as it were they, they know the sun's about to come up they don't want to stay as vampires they want to cleanse their souls so it's, it's, um, a church song and <laughs> Bev. Beth tries to dig a hole real quick <laughs> before the slum comes up for the last resort. There she dies. Um, the sheriff has and he dies uh, as they're doing a, a Muslim prayer. And the son, he burns uh, with the dad. He burns uh, right alongside the dad, I should say. Um, the rest of the town dies except for Lisa and... Oh, what's this? Uh, son's, son's name? Um, what is his name? I don't know his name Warren, I think it's Warren. Um, okay, it's Warren. Yes, yeah, Warren. So Warren and Lisa, because Warren always liked Lisa for uh, Friday the show. So Warren and Lisa, they go on the boat and they see the <laughs> Dracula flying off. And even Warren's like, he ain't, make, he ain't gonna make it, his wings are a mess. <laughs> he goes, it's 30 miles and sunlight's coming up, he's not gonna make it to the next town. So. So they allude to the vampire dying and not be able to make it with broken wings or torn to shreds wings. But we never know. But the way the show ends, it's just them two in a boat, the town's burning. Hold on. Bev, they should burn all these places down. <laughs> the sheriff burns down the only um, flipping stronghold that Bev set up with all these beds where the vampires come about to live for it. Um, for how long are they going to live? And that got taken away from him, and then it was, it was mad, it was crazy. Beth was an architect of her own destruction, and I loved it. Um, but yeah, um, it's crazy. Oh, but before I do all that, I, just, I forgot all these little, little parts as well at the starting, where we first see Father Paul just gorge on Joe's skull. That was a great, that was a great visual, that was, that was awesome. That's when he first realised he literally had to feed it. It was like he couldn't hold it in anymore. Joe had to go. <laughs> he killed Joe all the time, helping him get over his alcoholism. Um, oh yeah, Lisa forgave Joe before before he died. Before um, Pruitt got to him. But yeah. Um, so yeah, so yeah, Tom Burns. The ones that, except for those last two, the last two members of Cocker Island are alive. Lisa and Warren, they survive. The vampire apocalypse. <laughs> so yeah, so that's how the show basically goes off air. And yeah. After this show this show is amazing. Like, I must have just gotta charge it real quick.
of it with this my computer is literally about to die but yeah as i was saying before this is it's crazy how good this show was i was like it's gonna be a good show i saw that the trailers and all that but i did not know how good this show was gonna be this <sighs> anyone into um religion and the, the vampire law anyone's into the vampire law just the horror elements and the suspense just pure if you're into suspense this show is perfect taste I'm going to say right now, this show is 10 out of 10. Um, this show is A+. Plus. It's an A+, plus show. Midnight Mass. <sighs> Magnifique. Come to the clam. You know? This is a banner. <sighs> My gosh, accolades upon accolades upon accolades needs to bestow upon this show. And Matt Flanagan. Matt Flanagan. I'm clapping. I'm clapping. So, yeah, if you haven't seen Midnight Mass... Go watch Midnight Mass. Do it now. So yeah. Wherever you are there at night, stay safe out here in these streets. This is Legend of All 101 signing out. Peace.